Hi everyone, good afternoon. So, to my students in mathematics and in the modern world, I will be discussing to you a new topic which will be also part of your final examination. Okay? Now, before we start discussing that new lesson, I will uh, have some sort of review about our previous topics. Now, last time, we discussed about what path, circuit, angular circuit are, right? Now, when we say path, it's a movement from one vertex to another. Now, an example of this uh, figure, which is a path, would be... Bowling shop. It would be A to B to C then to E. A to B to C then to E. So it's just a movement from one vertex, so we started with A, and ended with another vertex, which is E. So another example of a path from this figure would be A to B to G. Okay? Now, another one is the circuit. circuit. Now, when you say circuit, it's a path that starts and ends at the same vertex. Now, let us say, for example, again, this figure, an example of a circuit would be from A, to D, to B, and going back to B. So that is an example of a circuit. Another example of a circuit from this figure would be B to C to E, then going back to D. So if you start from a particular vertex and ends with the same vertex, then it is called a circuit. Now the last one that we discussed last time is the Euler circuit or the Euler circuit. When you say Euler circuit, it's a circuit that passes through every edge only once. Now, based on this figure, we can um, derive an Euler circuit, which would be let's start uh, let's start from A, then going to B, then going to C, then going to E. Next, we'll be going to G, then going to D. Next, we'll be going to E. Then we have, I know that's D rather. Next, we'll be E. Then we have H. Next is G. Then F, then going to D, and lastly we'll be going back to D. So this one is an example of a Euler circuit. Now when you say an Euler circuit, once again, it's a circuit that passes through every edge only once. Now when we say circuit, it starts and ends with the same vertex, just like this one. Now, you can only determine if a particular graph has a Euler circuit if and only if all of the degree of the vertices are even. Let's say, for example, the degree of A is 2. When we say degree, those are the number of edges connected to that specific vertex. Now, for B, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, edges connected to it, so that is why the degree of B is 4. For C, the, uh, the degree of C is 2. For D and E, the degrees are 4. For F and H, the degree is 2. And for G, we have the degree is also 4. Now, since all of the degrees of all the vertices are even, therefore, we can draw different kinds of Euler circuits from this. Alright, so this time, we will be talking about Euler path. Now, what is the difference and the similarities between Euler path and Euler circuit? Now, the similarities between the two is that they both pass through all of the edges in a specific graph only once. But, the difference between the two is that when you say an Euler circuit, it's a circuit. And therefore, it must start and end with the same vertex. Now, unlike the Euler circuit, an Euler path does not necessarily end with the same vertex. Now let us say for, for this example, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G vertices in a specific graph. Now where, when can we tell if a specific graph can have Euler 
path or oiler circuit. Now, you can determine a graph if it is an oiler path, if and only if the degree of two vertices of that particular graph map is odd and the rest will be even. Now, let us say for example, let's determine first the uh, vertices of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Now, for A, the degree of A will be 2. Okay? Now, we have B, the degree of B will be 1, 2, 3, 3. For C, the degree of C will be 4. For D, we have 2. For E, we have 3. For F, we have 2. And G has a degree of 4. Now, two of those edges are odd, which are B and E, because their degrees are both 3. And the rest of them are even. Therefore, we can see that this graph contains an Euler path. Now, what kind of Euler path can we take out from this graph? Now, an example of which would be, let's start from, um, okay, before we do that, in, in plotting or in determining an Euler path, you must always start with a vertex that has an odd degree. Again, you must start always with a vertex with an odd degree and ends with another vertex regardless if it's a vertex with an odd or uh, even degree. Now, for this one, we can start with B since B has a degree of 3. Now, let's say we have B. So, we have B going to A. Then, we have G. Then, we have B. Then, we have C. Then, we have G. Then, going to F. Then, E. Then, C. Then D, then E. Now, as you can see, in this path or in this uh, movement, we started with the vertex B of an odd degree and ended up with another vertex which is E. Now, that is very important in uh, graphing an Euler, Euler part, uh, path rather, because you need to determine first the degree of every vertex present in that specific graph. Now, again, you must start always with a vertex with an odd degree and end with another vertex. And like the Euler uh, circuit, all of the vertices of that graph must contain even degree. Okay? Now, that is all. So I hope that you have understood this latter topic and see you next time. Bye!